Yes. So what kind of products did you design at that time? I was coming to that. <clears throat> so at that time, uh, uh, in India, television sets were all coming in CKD and SKD kits. So people would just bring them from Korea, assemble them and sell them. A, v a very few companies were actually beginning to design their own cabinets. So my first job was at Uptron. I had a job and I was paid 1200 rupees a month. And I just got it uh, because one of our one year junior to me, um, Ashok, Ashok Rai, his dad was the CEO of that company. So he just brought out, he understood what design was and he wanted to make that a part of his company. So I actually got the, by a visionary CEO, he decided to build his own indigenous TV cabinet. So I was given the job of designing a fully plastic cabinet. So that's how I started like designing TV cabinets. Um, and then I just got that, designed many TV cabinets, both when I was at Uptron, then later on when I started my practice. Then I got bored in Lucknow because I have even 1200 rupees, I didn't know how to spend that. Like my rent was 250 rupees and then what do I do with all this, all this money? There's nothing, I couldn't eat enough to like spend all that money also. So I gave up the job, went to Bajaj Electricals. Then there I started, I designed an electric iron. I designed a toaster oven. I designed uh, a lot of product <coughs> graphics for many of their appliances and did some product planning. At that time, they had uh, hired an external consultant, uh, Kirti Trivedi, I don't know if you know him. He and uh, Munshi from IDC, they had their own practice. So we worked together. Sorry? GV was to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, so we worked together. I learned a lot from them and I was young designer, uh, curious to do things better. Uh, so those are the products I designed and then once I started my own practice, at that time another of my classmates from my batch, Sunil Patel, had already joined Philips. So he's doing a lot of product styling for Philips. So from him I learned a lot of rendering techniques that I didn't uh, learn at NID. And then, so he started, he quit Philips, he started his own practice. I, I quit Bajaj and we started doing like collaboration together. And because of his connections in the in Bombay industry and mine, uh, we started doing television cabinets, transistor radios, some amount of packaging. Uh, then I moved to Delhi and there's one, a big plastic molding company called Burji. He put me on a retainer and I started designing all kinds of plastic components for electronic products, did packaging. And then uh, I got invited by, um, What's his name? Uh, Hero Pook's CEO that time. Um, Munjal. Yeah, Pankaj Munja. Pankaj. Pankaj Munja to design his moped. And I remember like the first time he called me into his cabin and he had just been to some exhibition abroad and he had bought this like amazing motorcycle. The kinds you see now on, but that time they didn't exist. Huh? He's still like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he said, I want you to design my Hero Pook. I want it to be like this. I said, you know what? I want you to picture something. Imagine you're riding a hero book that looks like this with your girlfriend in the back and somebody on a Bajaj scooter overtakes you. Uh, what are you going to feel like? You, you have an emotion of that motorcycle that you picked up in Europe, but it rides only like for 20 kilometers an hour. And so Bajaj just, Scooter overtakes you, your girlfriend is not going to feel good, you're not going to feel good, probably you won't have that relationship anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> and so this is a wrong way, I'm not taking this project. I know they hired somebody else to do the project, but then he respected me and he got me to say, okay, don't do whole design, can you design accessories for uh, Hero Pook? So I did some designs then, but that's the time when I was going to the US to study. So Sharik, I don't know if some of you know Sharik. So I got Sharik involved and I said, hey, why don't you take over this project? But at the same time, he said, okay, spend a little more time, design all my showrooms. So I did a modular showroom and then I passed on the job to Jatin. And then at that time, I met at a party, I met the GM of Berger Paints. 
and he said can you design this like a modular showroom for me so i did that for me and then passed it on to jatin also like so those six months i did a whole bunch of things made a prototype showroom and passed it on to friends and then i absconded to the us now why did i go to the us is an interesting story all my design for the 13 years that i spent as a product designer in us my curiosity was human perception um i wanted to design a form that would have a targeted impact on human perception so what should my product speak what should be the psychological reaction of the users or the uh, shoppers so i was very interested in those like what and now we can call it semantic qualities of products and at that time there was a whole emerging field of product semantics coming up in the us i applied for a job at three different universities all of which had people working in that field i got i don't know if i applied at five places i got admission to three places i chose ohio state because uh, that's where most of nid graduates had been through i didn't have funding and they all said we'll put in a word for you will get money so i trusted them i went with just 3000 dollars in my pocket a four year old daughter and a wife uh, and i said okay if everybody says i'll make it happen and it happened like i got funding everything but the accident this that's the turning point in first semester i studied everything that was there in product semantics i got bored and my advisor said i have nothing else to offer you but i'll refer you to somebody else and he referred me to a visiting professor who was a head of research at fitch liz sanders she has a doctorate in anthropology and psychology and she was she was brought in by fitch to start research um, at fitch at the same time ido brought in jane fulton suri they both first social scientists in the field of design brought in to bring the end user perspective into design so she came on my graduate committee and then she opened up a whole bunch of literature from psychology anthropology sociology communications and i was like reading like crazy uh then reinhardt my primary advisor his uh, like intellectual partner was at upen his name is klaus krippendorf he was a professor of communications he introduced me to the ideas in uh, how human sense making uh, mechanism and metaphors and stuff like that so and then liz offered me an internship at fitch so what happened was while reading all these theories in all these social sciences i started going into people's homes and a breakthrough occurred to me until that point sitting in india i used to read moma's catalogs design magazines all over the place his magazine didn't exist so i can't like blame him for that <laughs> yeah but <laughs> everything that i saw in design magazines didn't exist in people's homes even in the countries whose design mag catalogs i saw and i began to worry like what's happening here like homes don't look like the homes i see in design catalogs they are messy they are like not coordinated they are why does a home feel like a home if they don't look like the home that designers think it ought to be and that's where i started having conversations from social scientist perspective and that's where i realized what we think design is is different from what people think the design of their environment is and i think it's important to understand what kind of a environment people want to build for themselves what kind of a meaning they want to draw what kind of a comfort they want to draw what kind of a emotion they want to draw and what does it give them a sense of their themselves like your sense of yourself might be totally different from even your wife's sense of herself right and there is no reason for you to feel you are this and for your wife to feel the same or you to feel the same as your wife does so i think all of these things the environment we live in and the image we have of the world of the future and of everything defines how we construct our world 